Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats and in this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus and limits, uh, we're, going to, we're going to consider another important limit. Actually, it's a limit that we've already considered in this particular series of videos, but we're going to take a different angle in relation to trying to, in trying to uh, figure out and show that the limit of sine x over x as x tends to zero is in fact equal to one. Uh, in the video before this particular video, uh, we took a geometric approach to estimating uh, this particular limit. What we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to use the Taylor series uh, for sine x, and in particular, uh, the, McLaren, uh, the McLaren variant of that particular series uh, when a is equal to zero uh, to estimate this particular limit. But before we get there, let's just have a look at the function sine x, okay? So let's just, uh, let's consider, let's consider, uh, Let's consider uh, f of x, f of x equals sine x. And let's just have a look at its derivatives. Uh, obviously, this particular function is infinitely uh, differentiable. Okay? We can differentiate this over and over and over again. It's uh, differentiable in infinitely, which is important for the Taylor expansion, uh, the, the infinite Taylor expansion uh, of, of, of sine x. Uh, but let's just note, yeah, so we're considering this particular function here. Uh, it's let's say this function can be can be written as f zero of x, so it's not the derivative; it's simply equal to sine x. Okay, keep that in mind. Then we can take the first derivative of this particular this particular fun function. So let's say f one of x. Well, the derivative of sine x is simply cos x. Okay, and we can continue. Uh, we can take the second. We can take the the second derivative of sine x, which is effectively the derivative of this uh, first derivative. So we can calculate uh, f two of x, the second derivative, and just recall that the derivative of cos x is in fact minus uh, sine of x. Uh, then we can get the third derivative, let's say f3 of x uh, is the derivative of minus uh, sine of x. The derivative of sine x is cos x, so what we end up with here is minus cos x. And just so that we can see the sequence here, we'll just continue on another four terms. Uh, let's say we get the fourth derivative, uh, well the derivative of cos x is minus sine x, so the minus times minus gives us a positive sine x. Uh, then we get the derivative here, you can see f5 of x is going to be equal to, the derivative of sine x is cos x, uh, f6 of x is going to be equal to minus sine x, and f7 of x is going to be equal to, <coughs> excuse me, well the derivative of sine x is cos x, so it's going to be minus, minus yeah, cos x. The important point that I'm trying to highlight here is that as we differentiate this particular function, okay, uh, that what we have is we have a recurring, we have a recurring pattern uh, going from sine x cos x minus sine x cos x. We have this particular pattern here occurring, and then we start again. Uh, so we can see that this particular function uh, has a well-defined structure and a well-defined pattern in relation to its derivatives, okay? and this is going to be important for us. Uh, what we want to do, because when we look at the McLaurin series, uh, we're going to evaluate this particular function at a particular at a particular point a, uh, and in particular when uh, when a is equal to when is a is equal to zero. So let's just actually effectively estimate these. So from here, let's just estimate what f zero of zero is. So uh, the sine of zero, well, sine of zero, uh, and let's assume that this is in radians. Okay, so the sine of zero is effectively zero. Uh, let's say f f one of zero, the cos of zero is equal to is equal to one. Uh, then we have uh, f two of zero is equal to well sine of zero is equal to zero and minus zero is just equal to zero. Uh, then we have f three of zero is going to be equal to well the cos of zero is one, so this gives us a minus one, and the pattern is going to continue because this particular pattern continues here. So then we have f four of zero is equal to zero f5 of 0 is equal to 1, uh, f6 of 0 is equal to 0, uh, f7 of 0 is equal to minus 1. Once again, you can see that this pattern is continuing. This is going to be important because we're going to have these particular as uh, these particular parameters in the, in the expansion uh, of sine x. So what does the Taylor series tell us? Uh, well, it says for an infinitely differentiable function, so for an infinitely, an infinitely differentiable differentiable function okay we can we can expand out the function in the form of <clears throat> uh, in the form of a, a, a summation okay so what it tells us effectively is this 
uh, is that f of x is effectively equal to, it's an infinite summation, so it's a sum from n is equal to zero to infinity,